Hello guys, uh, we'll be looking at the timetable module of Udina today. To go to timetable, we will go to academics and timetable. And here we can create a class timing set, which means that we can set class timings for each day for a batch, or we can create a same class timing for all the weekdays of the class. And then we can set weekdays for a particular batch and assign them the class timings that we just created. Then we can create a timetable and we can edit it. We can view the timetable and get a PDF report of it. We can view the teacher timetable. We can view the work allotment, so the classes or the periods that the teachers are assigned. We can view the full timetable of the institute for a particular date. We can swap the teachers from timetable tracker and we can allot classroom. So we'll go to manage class timing set for the first time and you will see a default class timing set which will already be appearing. Here I can click on view class timings and you will see if, if you're using Fedina for the first time you'll get an option here to add class timings. So a class timings means the duration of a particular period. So for example, for the default, I have created a class timing period 1, start time 9 and end time 10. And like this, I have created many periods here along with a break. To create a break, you have to check this option of is a break like this. And once we have created the class timing set, we have changed the default class timing set. Now, when you create the timetable by going to create timetable, the same class timing set will be applicable for the timetable for all the batches. So by default, default is a class timing set that is applicable to all the batches. In case you do not want the class timing to be the one that you have put in default, you can create your own class timing by clicking on new. So you will give a name like, let's say, Monday to Friday grade 4 class timing. So you can create class timing for each batch, for each grade, for each day or for a set of days together. So I am saying here Monday to Friday for grade 4. So I am giving it a readable name so that I can add the class timings that will be followed by grade 4 students from Monday through Friday. So once you create that class timing set, it will appear like this. And when you click in front of it, again you will get an option here to add class timing set like this. And you will be able to enter all the periods. So like this. Let's say Monday to Friday, this is the class timing set that is followed by grade 4. But on Saturday, it is a different class timing set. Then we, I have created a class timing set called Saturday grade 4 and I have added a different class timing set for that particular date. Now I need to assign this class timing set which is Monday to Friday and Saturday to this batch which is grade 4. So I will go to set weekdays and class timing and you will see that by default the class timing set will be assigned will be default as I said. So since you have changed the default class timing set for all the batches and for all the days Monday through Friday default will be automatically coming here. In case you want to change it you have to select the particular batch so like this and here you will be able to change it as per your weekdays. So let's say your school is working from Monday through Saturday and you want to assign from default by default default will be coming here we want to change it to Monday to Friday grade 4 class timing. So we have to do it for this particular batch for all the days in which this class timing is followed like this. So here I will be selecting Monday through Friday like this and for Saturday since Saturday is also working I will be set selecting the other one which is Saturday class timing set from here. You can see by default default is coming but I can change it and this 
change that you are doing here will only be applicable from the timetable that you create after this date. So if you already have a running timetable and you make a change here, the changes will not be reflected in the running timetables. The changes will be reflected in the new timetables that I create starting this duration. So you can set this to be a current date or a future date. And now if I create a new timetable by going to create timetable, I'll be able to see the class timings that I've assigned to that new batch. So here, let's say I'll be creating the timetable. When you're creating the timetable, the most important thing to keep in mind is when do you, till when do you want the repetition of the timetable to happen? Meaning that for Monday, let's say you have three classes. If you want these three classes to repeat for all the Mondays, so you have to mention that particular duration here. It can be a week, it can be a month, or the full academic year of the batches as well. So it means in the duration that you're going to select here, the classroom allocation, the periods allocation, or the classes allocation, and the teacher allocation will repeat or will be same for each weekday. So all the Mondays will have the same teacher and classroom allocation, all the Tuesdays will have the same and so on. So depending on that, you can set the duration here. I've already set the duration to be 27th February to 27th March. So it is one month duration. And now I'll be able to select the batch from here. And as for the class timing set that I have assigned, the details come up like this. So you can see it is changing for each batch as for the class timing set that I have assigned. And then I can select the subject. So here, let me select it for a batch that has subjects. And the teacher who is associated with the subject will come up. So for grade seven, let's say we have this subject and the teacher who is associated with the subject is coming up. I'll be selecting the cells when I want the subject to happen and I'll click on the teacher name and I'll click on assign. So it will be assigned and in case there is any warning, for example, it says weekly subject limit reached. So when I created this subject, I gave the number of periods that can happen in a week to be two, but I'm assigning four periods for this subject. So that is why I'm getting two warnings here. I can continue this or discard it. So all the warnings are also taken care of. So here again, we will be selecting the batches where we want that subject to happen. Click on the name of the employee and click on assign and it gets assigned like this. So this has to be done for all the slots that we have here. And then after we have done this, we can view this timetable by going to view timetable and we can get a printout of this as well. So here for any timetable that you have set, you can get a PDF report or a CSV report from here. We can see the work allotment of the teachers by going here. So this is similar to what we did for employee subject association. The difference is that all the batches come up here and we can see all the subjects and we can assign teachers from here as well. So I'll be selecting the employee like this and I can assign the teachers here. And as per the assignments that you are doing, the right hand side gets changed. So this table shows you the work allotment of the teacher. For example, if there is a teacher, let's say employee one, who is a grade two teacher, meaning that in grade two, we have defined the maximum periods per week to be, let's say eight. And this E1 employee is associated to maths, where we have given the maximum weekly classes per week to be let's say four and to English as well, which is again maximum weekly classes to be four. So 
if you see this then employee e1 is taking the right set of classes so that is why in front of this name you will see okay like here in case there is this employee e2 and for this employee you have the maximum weekly classes let's say to be 8 which is as per his grade we can say mathematics happen twice and english happen four times so here it will be coming as two remaining so on the right hand side in the table wherever you see two remaining it means you can assign two more periods to that particular employee or as per the number that you see here then we also have the third one which is deficit so again let's say even employee grade 1 grade 2 and mathematics is happening six times a week and english is happening four times a week so even it will show as two deficit it means he is over working so he's taking two more classes as opposed to what he was supposed to take in his as per his grade so this talks about work allotment we can see the teacher timetable so for this particular duration which all teachers are there which i have allocated the timetable to and when they are available and when they are busy on which date that can be seen from here so we can see all these details then we can see the institutional timetable which shows for a particular date that we have here we, we can change it to the next date or any previous date as well we can see the timetables that we've created as per the timetables we've created what is the period that is happening and on what time and he's, it's taken by which teacher and what is the subject and the batch as well so it shows all the details for the full institute so as per the timetable entries that you have done we have timetable tracker using which we can swap the teacher who is already taking a period so if there is a teacher who will not be able to take the class that she was assigned in the work allotment then we can change it from here so let's say english was taken by flexi but now she will not be able to take it so we can assign it to another teacher like this we also get an option to change the subject here as well not only the teacher and we can since these are last moment changes ad hoc changes we can see the same report by going to swapped timetable report for a particular duration like this so for this duration i can see the details here and one hyphen denotes that this employee has worked one period less as per what you see in his work allotment so in the table that i showed you this employee has taken one less period so it means if it was okay for this employee it it now becomes remaining one so accordingly we can again assign her periods we can export this to csv as well then we have classroom allocation so using classroom allocation we can create buildings name of the buildings can be given so like i have given this name west block and inside each building i can add rooms like this i can mention the capacity as well more rooms can be added by using this link again it will ask you for the name of the room and the capacity and once we've created the buildings we can allocate the same weekly so it means as i said like a timetable repeats for the duration of the timetable that you selected here similarly the classroom allocation also repeats so here for this particular duration which is 27 february to 27 march i have to do the classroom allocation for one week only which is monday through saturday or monday to friday as per the working days of your institute so you will see that all the batches are appearing here for which i have created timetable so let's say for g5 i'll be selecting the block from here so let's say north block this is the building the room 
I'll be dragging and dropping the room on that particular slot. So it means mathematics of G5A 2014 will happen in N1 classroom. Similarly, I'll be doing it for another slot. And this process I have to do for the G5 batch Monday through Saturday, if it is working till Saturday. And once we have done that, we also have an option to do the allocation date specific. Meaning that what we have done currently is that all the Mondays the class will happen in N1. And let's say for all the Tuesdays it will happen in N2. But because of some reason, the classroom, the class that was supposed to happen for Monday, it will not happen in L1, rather it will happen in C1. So what I am doing, I am overriding that allocation here. So if there is an ad hoc change that you want to do in the classroom allocation, that can be done using date wise allocation here, date specific. So this is all about the timetable module that we have. Be tuned in for more videos.